What's going on? Alex here, and today I'm answering your tax questions from Reddit. And today's question has to do with a situation where a taxpayer has never filed a tax return. And it will also be applicable to situations where someone hasn't filed for six, seven, three years, what have you. So let's take a look. All right. So this question comes from Choice Prune 34, and it goes as follows Never filed taxes. I'm 27 years old, self-employed for the past four years, and have never filed taxes. I don't know how. I made a small amount of money at various jobs as a 16 to 23-year-old that have had taxes removed. I'm assuming that means withheld. I have tried to file electronically, but you need previous tax identification numbers to do so. I've made a significant amount of money, 300000 to 700000 while being self-employed. And I want to pay taxes due on that money. And I know there will be penalties and fines and interest as well as payments to whoever helps me. But I just want to clear everything up. I know I need a professional. I live in the Los Angeles area. Bada bing, bada bam. All right. So this is an interesting situation, but it is not all that uncommon. Some people just find taxes to be intimidating. They find them scary. So they try to stay away from it altogether. The problem is that it's easy to do one year, then it's easier to do the next. And before you know it, you have a number of tax years where tax returns have not been filed and the problem compounds. Now, the real issue, and this is a common misconception that I want to address, is that taxpayers feel like, oh, well, it's more than three years ago. I don't have to worry about it because they've heard that there's a three-year statute of limitations that may be applicable in some situations. Now, unfortunately, while there is a three-year statute of limitations that is sometimes applicable, it does not apply in situations where you have unfiled tax returns. Now, why is that? It's because the statute of limitations do not start until you file the tax return in question. So what that means is if you've never filed income tax returns, then essentially the IRS and the state taxing authorities can come after you at any time. Point. They're not limited by three years, six years, seven years, any of those statutes of limitation. They can really assess these taxes at any point. And what they'll do is they'll put together a tax return given the information that they have and go from there in terms of assessing penalties and interest. And sometimes this comes all at the same time like an avalanche. Not pleasant, but there are ways to address this situation. So let's try to piece this together step at a time, get an idea of what we're dealing with and see how to best move forward. So 27 years old, self-employed for the past four years and never filed taxes. And from 16 to 24, it looks like there were taxes withheld because this individual was working at various jobs. So one benefit there may be that the amount of taxes due for those years where this individual was 16 to 23 years old may not be all that significant when all is said and done because let's say the total amount of tax is $5,000, but you had 4,500 withheld, you'd only be owing that additional $500 amount. Keep in mind, there will be penalties and interest added to that, but it's better than owing $5,000 for the year. So for the years when this person was 16 to 23, it may be just a matter of getting the returns filed and you might be all set from there. Hopefully the withholdings were sufficient to cover whatever the tax liabilities were at the federal and state levels. The way you'd figure that out is you'd start with some IRS transcripts. You have a way of reaching out to IRS and us tax professionals can reach out to the IRS and request transcripts. Basically, we ask that the IRS shows us their cards and lets us know what information they have in terms of a taxpayer's income for a particular year. And if you're working as a W-2 employee, that would include those W-2s that were filed for those years. They can tell us the amount of federal taxes withheld, the amount of income and so forth. A lot of good information there. That would allow us to get the process started in terms of getting the information for the earliest year and kind of moving forward from there. And in those early years, the W-2s may very well be the most significant document for each one of those years. On top of that, when we move into the self-employed area, that's when things get a little bit more tricky. And specifically, it looks like this is the past four tax years. Now, again, being that no tax returns were filed, the three-year statute of limitations is not applicable in this situation. It has nothing to do with anything at all. The IRS can assess whenever if you don't file a return. So in terms of those missed years where an individual is self-employed, what we generally do 
is we start by getting those transcripts. We want the IRS to show us their cards, what they're holding in terms of what they feel that this taxpayer has received. So if you're self-employed, it would be those 1099 miscellaneous forms that were filed on your behalf. But let's say you received $300,000 in tax year 2015, just as an example. And the IRS received forms 1099 for 100000 But you know, looking at the bank statements, you received 300000 We would use that higher 300000 number because sometimes 1099 miscellaneous forms are not filed. Sometimes they're inaccurate. And it's very commonly the case that if your self-employment income is, let's say, 100000 you'll only receive 1099 miscellaneous forms for 50000 70000 or what have you. So we can't rely on the 1099 miscellaneous forms we would pull up the actual amount that you made throughout the year. And if need be, we'll pull bank statements from that year, go through them, outline all the income, and use that as a source of substantive information for terms of putting together the tax return, right? So if we need to look at the bank statements, we'll look at those and piece together what the income looked like for the year. So once we have that information, the next question is, what are the expenses? Because this person made $300 to $700,000, is that gross? Meaning, is that the amount that came in? Or is that the net, the amount after the business expenses are taken out? Because $300,000 in income, in gross income, can very well become zero net income or a loss from a net income perspective, depending on how the business was playing out. It really depends on the nature of the business and how the expenses were structured and so forth. That'll give us guidance in terms of what the net amount looks like. Because remember, the income tax is assessed on the net income, not the gross. So even if you made 300000 but you had 250000 in expenses, then that 50000 is subject to income taxes and self-employment taxes. So that big question is, what do the expenses look like? What does the substantiation look like for those expenses to allow us to try to decrease or offset as much of that self-employment income as possible? So it's not clear from this post if it's gross or net amounts that we're talking about here. But even if it's net amounts, we would still apply basically the same strategy in terms of making sure we cover all the income that came in and then seeing what expenses we can justifiably deduct for each particular tax year. And we'd start with the earliest year and move forward from there. What we'll likely find in this situation is that each of those tax years especially from the ages past 23 where this person was self-employed the past four tax years, will find that there's a significant amount of taxes due, meaning income taxes, self-employment taxes, penalties, and interest at both the federal and state levels. We need to take both of those into account because don't forget, sometimes the states are a lot more vicious than the federal government in terms of tax collection, all right? So in some cases, we address the states first and then we address the IRS, because in some ways, the IRS, as much as they're hated, as much as they're resented, they're more flexible in many ways than the states are in some cases. So we might use that to our advantage in terms of structuring how we're going to pay some of these amounts off. But filing these returns, we'll find that there's most likely tax liability at the federal and state levels. And once we prepare all those different returns for each tax year, then we know what we're dealing with. Because again, we don't know if this is gross or net, but let's say it's net, all right, and which is not attractive. But overall, if we're looking at a hundred thousand dollar tax it, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, we really don't know until we put together all of those returns. And then really the goal here would be to have each tax year laid out the amount of federal tax due for each year, plus penalties and interest. And same for any applicable states. And that'll give us the scope of this whole situation because right now it's really hard to tell what amounts we're really looking at. But in this situation, that's going to be the most crucial deciding factor. Now, it may be the case that you can just pay it all off. So file all the returns, pay it all off, get current, everyone's happy, it's all good. But it may be a situation where the amount of taxes and penalties due exceeds your total cash available to pay these amounts. So what happens then? So there are a few different options. Now we get into kind of the IRS payment collection process and the various options available there. There's such things as offering compromise. There's currently not collectible status. So there's a few tools available there. But if you're pulling in significant income, like 700,000, then there's 
probably little chance that you'll qualify for that. And you have to figure out a way to either pay it all off all at once to minimize the penalties and interest or put together an installment agreement with the IRS and with the state taxing authorities to get this all paid off over time. Now, just keep in mind, the payment plan does not halt the assessment of penalties and interest. So while you're paying it off, you're still being assessed penalties and interest, but you're given a lot more time to pay off those debts. On top of that, payment plans typically suspend collection actions by the taxing authorities. So they're going to be less aggressive in putting in tax liens and levies and things like that because you're on their radar and you're doing something proactively to address those debts. If you don't do anything, then they may be especially vicious once they kind of catch up to you and start sending their nasty grams, which are those letters that come in the mail telling you, hey, we've got some issues. So there are kind of a few layers to this onion. We really start off by determining the scope of the situation. So here it sounds like we're going back a quite a number of years and filing returns or preparing returns for each year to kind of see where we are. Hopefully for those years where you were employed as an employee and taxes were withheld, it shouldn't be too significant in terms of the taxes due if the withholdings were done correctly. It's not a guarantee. The concerning years are those self-employment years, the past four years where the income was fairly significant. There we might have to figure out overall how we're going to handle the tax liability and the penalties and interest that have accrued there. But at the end of the day, as scary as this situation may be, it's not insurmountable. It's happened before. There are plenty of taxpayers who get shy about taxes. They're intimidated and they want to avoid it. It's not fun. We understand but at the same time, there are ways to catch up, get current, and make sure that moving forward, you take the steps necessary to stay on top of those taxes, make those estimated payments, and don't pay Uncle Sam any more than you need to. All right. So, choice underscore prune 34. Hopefully, this helped shed some light on your situation and give you kind of a path forward in terms of addressing all of this craziness. As always, if you found value in this video, feel free to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, leave a comment. I love reading your comments. And overall, the goal is to always keep it fun, light, educational, simple, and just a beautiful thing overall. As always, hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching.